It's a crash. <laughs> Cousin It is babysitting his baby It's. There is something I always used to enjoy when I visited Germany during the summer months because I grew up by water, the beach, etc. in Kenya, but in Germany, when I was in Bavaria, the summers would be very hot, but there would be no real water source like an ocean around, except for some lakes, which we didn't always go to. The fun part was, though, when my cousins and I were in some gardens and stuff and they had their sprinklers on, and then we got to run around in the sprinklers, jumping around, refreshing ourselves, in the sunshine and this is what I do with baby it's every single day several times a day now anyway welcome to an update let's have a look how baby it's are doing these are maxillaria variabilis cuttings to be precise if you miss the live stream where I trimmed cut and groomed cousin it who is the big daddy of these cuttings then I just want to explain that two months ago I did a major grooming session of cousin it my specimen maxillaria variabilis because much needed I needed some airflow to get in and under that orchid it's been in the pot for the past five years so it has to have some airflow despite the fact it lost the shape a little bit of the drooping cousin it but he is still cousin it here on the patio and these are baby it's so I thought it would be a great idea to show you how the progress or lack thereof is coming with all these cuttings. There's four of them in each pot tied up in a bundle because when you take a cutting from a maxillaria, what you're actually doing is severing the root source that may have reached the pot totally off and you really have to work with what is in all the bracts because in the bracts here, there are roots and you cannot lose them. They still have to grow. They have to find their way down if they can find their way down. So I have seen some developments, good and expected, which I would like to share with you. Any browning of the leaves you see here has nothing to do with the fact that it is a cutting. This is cold damage from the last winter. Not concerned about that. I am more watching and observing and ensuring that the new growths right here are progressing in a satisfactory manner because you can see that the pseudobulbs are starting to desiccate and that is to be expected that is why when you do a cutting of a maxillaria orchid it is also ideal to get as many pseudobulbs cut off not just the two or three if we're talking about big cattleya propagation but as many as possible because the more pseudobulbs you have in a cutting the more roots there are to help sustain the orchid. Once, for example, we can see that the pseudobulbs are going to recover and plump up again, then we will know that roots have reached the pot. So all my cuttings are, as I mentioned, bundled up together, stuck into the pot, even pseudobulbs buried, top dressed with sphagnum moss in a semi-hydro setup, but I do not fill the reservoir because of all the misting I am doing. There is no point to fill up the reservoir in a situation like this. The most important thing is to keep those bracts wet and of course not have rot set in. Now it's super easy when it's nice and warm and very very breezy for most of the days to be able to mist aggressively and abundantly without any concerns of rot kicking in. This is when the orchid is an active growth, cuttings or not, it is an active growth and it is a drinker on the worst of days. There's no real rest period for a maxillaria variabilis. It's either in bloom or growing actively and it needs water, water. I cannot emphasize enough how much water it needs. So in the morning, what I'm doing is giving all these cuttings a misting as you just saw but with fertilizer. I've also alternated with calcium and magnesium at a ratio of 100 parts per million of calcium and magnesium and 60 parts per million of seaweed. So alternating between weak fertilizer, also at 100 parts per million, and then supplementing with calcium, magnesium, and seaweed, after which, during the rest of the day, when I keep misting the bracts down again, it's only plain RO water, so you can really consider it a flush. Now, the drooping here is not to be confused with the orchid is not doing well. The drooping is because of where it came off the mother plant. So that's not a concern, but we need to stake that, which I'm going to do 
because I don't want the orchid to start correcting itself with this growth and do something funky. So we're just going to correct that, make sure that it is a little bit more upright and eventually doesn't lift itself out of the little container. Other than that, I can report that I am not concerned about the well-being of baby its. They're all doing fabulously. Two have been spoken for. Two are still yet to be spoken for, let's just say. So here I have Clinton Carmen's piece doing well, in my opinion, even though the pseudobulbs are shriveled. I am not concerned at all because the progress of the new growth is looking marvelous. Yes, I'm digging this a lot. So here's the Clinton Carmen Baby It. That probably could be staked as well. We'll have to see. I've only prepared two stakes. Here's the one for Fernanda Nathimento orchids and succulents. Again, this is cold damage. Nothing to do with the fact that there is any kind of stress going on, apart from a little bit of shriveling in the pseudobulbs, but the growths are doing fabulously as well, coming in as expected. And I can compare that with the mother plant because we're going to go back and look at how the growths are progressing on the mother plant that is mature specimen and totally rooted in and see the progress comparison with the baby its. But first I want to stake baby its one and two and get them back into their deep shade so that they can continue to develop well for us. Now seeing as the baby its aren't rooted in yet, I don't mind stabbing around with a stake in the pot. I'd like to get that a little bit lower. There we go. And then we can cut off the top half, get that into the other pot, and just put a little tie around there. I thought this little update would be important just because if people are seeing what I did, I hope that this update will make you feel better if you're seeing shriveled pseudobulbs so that you know there's nothing to be concerned about at all. And if in doubt, keep misting and keep them in a very, very breezy location. That makes me feel a lot better. Now, on to baby number two. If you found this video very informative so far and it has calmed your nerves, if you were doing the same thing and seeing shriveled pseudobulbs, would you be so kind as to give it a like, please? I would so appreciate it. And subscribe to the channel because there is more shenanigans going on on the patio that I would not want you to miss. So thank you so much for that in advance. Now, let's look at big boy, baby daddy, cousin it, and compare the progress of the growth on the baby it's so that you can see what I'm looking at and why I'm not concerned about any shriveling of the pseudobulbs. Hello, handsome. Isn't he gorgeous? Okay. Here's a new growth. Here's a new growth. And yes, we have more growths coming in the back here. Let me get that up like there. Okay. Now, the different stages of growth are also very important when it comes to a mother plant like this. The new growths that are more advanced lost their blooms much, much sooner, whereas the smaller growths, like this one right here, just probably dropped its last blooms two weeks ago. So that is the progression as to why there's different stages of growth. Now, by comparison, we've got baby it here. That growth is progressing beautifully progressing beautifully and coming out right here. So we have a similar growth of similar stature right here, also up in here. So you see here's the pilot program, the comparison, let's just say that everything is going according to plan. Excuse me for the jiggle when it comes to comparing how the mother plant is progressing and then looking at the little ones to see that they're not doing badly at all. If you would like to stick around, I'm going to show you something now as well, just as a little bonus. Seeing as we're on the subject of maxillarias, look at this beautiful maxillaria tenifolia in bloom. Same procedure could be done on her if I were to propagate this orchid. It's a little bit more difficult because it's more of a compact grower, but still, it's the same principle. 
She's a super slow grower, so the whole procedure of taking off any cuttings and then getting them to grow on well would take a little bit more time, but it can be done. That is not what we're going to do. I just wanted to show you my beautiful blooms, that smell of coconut in the sunshine. It's delicious. And then with a little bit of breeze, ooh, it's like somebody sunbathing on the patio. Anyway, little bonus here at the end. If you have any questions about maxillaria cuttings, timing, etc., let me know in the comments. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a fabulous day on that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.